Well, good morning again to everybody. It's good to be here this morning. It's good to preach the Word of God. Back last, last Sunday, I think it was, I was going home, I thought about something. About talking to people about God. I got to thinking about Monday. The friend of Woods working. How many people do I talk to a week? Not as many as they used to because they don't travel around because of the COVID, because of this and that, whatever. Good excuses. But anyway, how many people do I tell about God each week? Do you ever think about that? A lot of you deal with computers, phones, messages, all that stuff. Most of that I don't know enough about. But how many people do you let know every week that Jesus loves them? How many people do you let know through your life and your actions and all that that Jesus loves them? That there is a God and without Jesus Christ that they're going to end up in a bad place. You know, things are not going to work out. You know, picture this. You all uh, can picture things. Picture this scenario. Everybody here is going to the grocery store, right? Once or twice, three times, maybe that many times a week. But say you go to the grocery store, and you park in the middle of the parking lot, and you go to walk up there to the store, and through the parking lot, and you see this young lady come out of the store. She's pushing the grocery cart with this hand. She's got a little baby in this hand, and a toddler following along the side. She gets all the way to her, just right out of her car, and you're watching this to see what if she's walking right there and you're right here. And the baby drops its toy and it rolls under the front of the car. Well, naturally, you just watch as the toddler runs over there and gets little sissy's toy out from underneath the car. But in doing so, you notice something else. You notice one of the front tires has got a big old knot about that big on it. Air bubble on the inside of the tire. The lady's getting ready to get in after she puts her groceries in and drive off. What are you going to do? Anybody got any ideas what you would do? You're probably, knowing that that's not going to be safe for her to drive, probably, you're probably going to go over and tell her about it, right? Why? Because you're concerned about her safety and those little children that she has. Now, think of it this way. Say you're another guy. Say you're the guy that uh, just yesterday, that same lady, and you recognize her when she walked out of the store. She's a lady that came to your garage yesterday, and you put them tires on her for her. They was $200 a piece. You told her they was guaranteed for 40,000 miles, best tires she could get for the money. And now you see that there's a big knot on the inside. You're going to have the same story when you get over to her and the same feeling as you did before? In other words, you're going to go over and tell her that maybe that car ain't safe to drive. If first scenario, but second scenario, you can wait to get there when you get over there. No, that, I'll notice your tire there. They got that knot on the side. That's a, that's a access air is what it is. In case your tire starts going low, that'll go back into the car there. <laughs> Is that what we're going to tell them? You know, we're, it don't matter. Either situation, we're going to tell that lady something. Or we're going to tell her the truth. That's what I'm getting at. If you know you put them tires in her, you're a mechanic, and it's going to, you're going to lose $200. Maybe. In other words, you ain't going to gain nothing by it. Is that how people are in the world today? Do we tell, if we don't tell that lady about her tire, how is she going to know She's not. If we don't tell that lady about Christ, how's she going to know? If we're concerned about that lady's safety, why in the world ain't we concerned about our friends, our family, and everybody else in the world not knowing about Jesus Christ? How are people going to know if we don't tell them? If we just sit there solemnly, as I said before, and don't ever say nothing to nobody. 
If I just go to the woods every day, don't ever talk to nobody, go back to the house, who am I affecting? Who am I telling about God? Nobody. You know, how, how are we going to survive like that? How is God's word going to be spread? You know, do, and when we do tell people something, this is what really gets me. I do listen sometimes to ministers and uh, on the, I guess on the phone, or whatever you call it, the news, I guess, <coughs> on the internet. But are all those ministers telling the truth in the world today? Are all the ministers in church that are witnessing for God and telling people about God, are they telling the truth? The whole truth, nothing but the truth. When we witness to other people, are we telling them the whole truth? Or are we just telling them what they want to hear? I'm not going to stand up here and preach what you want to hear. I'm going to stand up here and preach what's in this Bible, Amen. whether you like it or not. Amen. And that's the way we got to be when we talk, when we witness to other people. We can witness to people and tell other people about God. But if we know that they are a full, what, what we say is a full-fledged sinner. They don't go to church. They do all kinds of bad things, everything against God's commandments. <coughs> and we invite them to church. No, I ain't going to church. Yeah, you ought to come to church sometime. It don't matter if you see them. That's accepted in the world today. All you got to do is come to church. Put a little extra money in the offering. It'll be all right. God still loves you. Mm -hmm. You have a right to sin. Everybody in the world's got a right to do something, whatever they want today. You don't have to worry about God. You ever hear that? That's all you hear anymore. I'll tell you, Jesus Christ and the good Lord has a right to punish you for your sins and you're going to end up in hell. That's what it's going to amount to. Amen. That's, just what, that's just what it's going to amount to. <laughs> all these rights that people have. They don't worry about God. They don't worry about what the Bible says. You know, we talked a little about politicians in Sunday school this morning. You know, we can't be a witness to somebody and invite them to our church and promise them that their life is going to be all peachy and nothing ever go wrong. We can't promise a person that is really, really sick and has something wrong with them that God is going to heal them, but we sure are going to pray for them, as Carl said. Right? We're going to pray for him. And it's up to God to do what his will will be to heal that person, to take that person home to be with him. That's not, that's not Roger's call. You know, I read something about a, common, a commentary I was reading this week. <clears throat> Talked about a preacher. He's well known. He's wrote many books and all kinds of things. He died in 1988, I think. They had a radio show in California. But it tells about him getting cancer and him going into the hospital. And as he lay there in bed, he was thinking about something. He thought about all the people that he had witnessed to in the hospital. All the people that he had held their hand and prayed for him that was in the hospital. And he said, Lord, they're not the ones in here now. I am. I told them to trust in the Lord and it will be okay. I told them to pray and it would be okay. But God is me now, not them. Show me that you're really here. And he said, God did. God gave him peace, gave him comfort. But we can't promise that to everybody. You know, we can try to live without God. We can try to go through life and not tell others about God. But as I've mentioned many times in my sermon, how many people, when you pass on, is going to be on the list that you neglected to tell about Jesus Christ because of what you was afraid of? You was afraid of rejection. You was afraid of disappointment, afraid of something else. How many people, if you're concerned about their safety, should you not tell about God? There's, and about not telling the truth, I talked about them preachers that preach what people want to hear. Preachers preach today what people want to hear in church so they will come to church. 
If I say something as a minister that offends you, you might not come back to church. But if it's in the Word of God, it's what the Bible says, not what Roger says. Amen. And I'm going to preach it. <coughs> a lot of preachers won't do that. That's in gray areas, they say. Most of them ain't gray, they're written in red. <laughs> Jesus Christ said it. But do we tell the truth? Yes. There's. If you go back to the book of Micah, chapter 3, Micah was warning the people about the leaders that was there and what did the prophets and pro the prophecies they was given and what was wrong with that. And this, this reminded me so much as I was reading through different parts of the Bible, this, this reminded me so much of the world today and the leaders today and the situations we're in today. Micah chapter 3, and, and I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob. These are people in charge. O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? In other words, do you think you're going to get by with this without anybody saying anything or God not judging you? It says, who hate the good and love evil. Have we got anybody, any leaders and ch or ministers or whoever like that today? A lot of them. They go to a little extreme here. It said, who pluck off the skin from off them, flesh off their bones, and eat the flesh of my people, flay the skin of them, and break their bones, and chop them up in pieces, put them in a pot. But it says, they do all this bad stuff. Verse 4 says, then shall they cry unto me, Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Do you believe that the world's getting in such a crazy shape that people have made fun of God so much? The leaders in this world and countries and states and counties and wherever else have denied God, they've taken him out of the courtrooms, they've taken him out of churches, they've taken him out of schools, they've taken him out of anything and everything, and yet, still on the dollar bill, and God we trust. They'll change that for long, I reckon. But, you know, they've taken God out of everything. But you believe that you deny God, these people deny God long enough, and the Bible says many places he will turn his back from them. He will hide his face from them. And that's what it says here. Because they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Verse 5 says, Thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. In other words, prophets that are false prophets that when we, that's witnessing to them people, prophesying but not telling the truth. Tell them what people want to hear. There's ministers today that it tells you all down here, about the people, why they do it. There's ministers today to preach for money. There's ministers today to preach for power, for glory, for all kinds of things. There's politicians today that pass laws just for gain, for their gain, to make people happy. The preachers can have 3,000 people in their church if they preach what the people want to hear. You don't ever make them mad. You don't ever step on their toes, as they say. Politicians get elected by promising people things. Do they do them? A lot of them don't. But it says here, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace. Does that sound good? That sound familiar? They're backbiters, but today have you heard that on the news? They cry peace, peace, peace. We need peace. We need unity. We need the world to be one. There's not going to be peace on this earth. In this world, until everybody turns to God. You can't have peace with your brothers and sisters if you don't have peace to, with God to start with. You can't be a backbiter, a swindler, and a sinner that takes advantage of people and expect your neighbor and your friends to like you. You can't be a person that turns away from God and expect to have peace on this earth because Satan's working. You're working for him. You ain't working for God. You ain't going to have peace through Satan. I promise you that. As soon as you think you do, something else happens. 
and said that bite with their teeth and cry peace. And he that put it not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. In other words, is it is there anything that's not against God anymore? Turn the news on. I'll bet you you don't see anything about prayers that are answers and that are answered and miracles happening in the church. Wait till the six o'clock news is sitting, turn it on. I'll bet you if you turn the six o'clock news on the scene, you will not see the prayers that were answered in these big cities or big churches or wherever. You will not see the miracles that are done. You will see people getting killed, people getting raped, people getting stabbed, people robbing banks, people in car wrecks, the bad, the bad, the bad. That's what I'm saying. How are you going to have peace when that's all people concentrate on in the world? You can't. The people in the world, the truth is so, the people in the world are so far from truth anymore. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And this world has turned so far from the truth and accepted everything that's not the truth and accepted all the ways it's not the truth just to make people happy. Just for their own gain. And that's what it says. It says, therefore, night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. It shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. In other words, they can pray and pray, these prophets. They pretend to be prophets of God, but they're prophets for themselves, they're prophets for their personal gain. They're prophets for power and glory and money. And yet they want God to answer their prayers. They want God to give them visions. They want God to give them, as, they, as he did to Daniel, the answer to the king's visions that he had. We want answers, don't we? Do you ever pray for answers in life to get to the place where you pray for answers? God, please let me know why all this has happened. One boy that goes to church here told me, he said, Roger, he said, I guess all this stuff's a test. He said, I wish I'd soon pass or fail. He said, <laughs> he said I'm done. But, you know, God tests us sometimes, don't he? The devil tests us too. He says, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and might to declare to Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. Now Micah was saying all this stuff. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you this is a sin. I'm going to tell you this is why you're suffering. Ezekiel is what we studied this morning. The people are wondering why he's getting taken into exile. Why he's taken into captivity. Because they sinned. They're blaming it on somebody else. We can't blame it on somebody else. We can follow the world today and blame it on everybody else does it, so it must be all right. They passed a law that said you could do that. It's legal now. This book here is what got God's law in it. Not the ones they pass in Congress and on the hill and wherever else. God's law and man's law differ a good bit. What man accepts, God will not. That's what this book says. The Bible, God's word. And what happened to people that didn't follow that? That's what I'm saying. If we don't tell people... Even if we make them mad, make them angry, whatever else, if we don't tell people the truth, who's going to tell them? If we don't tell people that's turned away from God and doing bad things that this book says is not accepted by God, who's going to tell them? The world ain't. If the world don't profit from it, they ain't going to tell nobody nothing. I'll guarantee you that. Says verse nine says, "Hear ye, I pray, hear this, I pray you, you heads of the house of Jacob, heads and princes, that arbor judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood, and Jerusalem with iniquity." Here in verse seven it says, "Just this describes the world today. The heads thereof judge for reward." 
In other words, the people in charge, if they don't make no money off of it, and they don't get no gain in power and glory, they ain't gonna do it. And the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? You ever hear that? I have. Is not the Lord among us? Yeah. When do we call on God? People turn away from God all their lives, and something bad happens while they do. God help me. Where is God? God, please help me. What would you do for him? Why didn't you talk to him before? What kind of relationship do you have with somebody that you treat like a spare tire in the trunk? You only get it out when you need it. I'll tell you, people, one day it's going to be flat. It says God will turn his face from you. You deny God long enough and run from him long enough. You can repent, yes. But until you accept God as your savior and, re as savior and repent and turn to God, as somebody said a while ago, your prayers are not going to be answered. I hate to tell you that. Look up what it says, the, the definition of why prayers are not answered. First of all, because you don't believe when you pray. Second of all, because you don't have any faith. Third of all, is you're a sinner and not returned to God. Does the prayers of a righteous man avail much? But it is not God among us. None evil can come upon us. You know, people say that in, in, in uh, higher up authority today. No evil is going to come upon us. We're going to be protected. What do they think is going to happen? Somebody needs to tell the politician and the leaders of this world today. They need to pray for them. Yes. Somebody needs to tell them what this book says is going to happen to them. It says, if you keep turning away from me, that's what it said. It says, the, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. The politician, the people that pass these laws, and the leaders and the lawmakers that pass these laws, it's against God. That's against everything that the Bible teaches us. What's going to happen to them? What did it say about the, well, I don't want to get into all of this. You know, the abortion is a big thing in the world today. <laughs> What's the Bible say about that? But it shall be better for anybody who hurts one of these little ones if a millstone was tied around his neck and he's thrown in the lake. It don't say an inner two. He ain't going to fare very good, I'll tell you that. But the people that's passing these laws today, people that's making the world go crazy, that they have the right to do this, I don't care what God says. You have the right to do that, I don't care what God says. Somebody's going to answer for all this one day. And it's going to be the people that are leading other people astray. Is what it's going to be. It's going to be the ministers that preach everything but the word of God. They preach for honor, for glory, to get their church full. They preach to make the people happy. They preach for pats on the back. Instead of somebody arguing with them and saying, hey, I don't think you'll preach that. Well, preach it, people. Preach what's in this book. Witness to other people. Witness to them what's in this book. My wife used the example one time. If you see a friend of yours walking out on an old rotten slab out over the fires of hell, wouldn't you tell them that the slab was rotten? Wouldn't you try to get them by? That's where people are headed today. And we're just there sitting by, drinking a beer, watching them go. What's that going to amount to? Who's responsible? The Bible says... To do, to do things, how does it say it? exactly? I don't remember. Those who, yeah, those who know to do good and doeth it not, to them it is a sin. And it is. And that's fine. In other words, if you know that you're supposed to tell somebody something, you ever have that feeling? You ever have the feeling you're supposed to tell somebody something and you didn't? Why? Because you're afraid they'd get mad at you. Yeah, you're afraid they get mad at you. Would you rather they be mad at you, upset with you, and never speak to you again until you get to heaven? Or would you rather they, you not say nothing to them and you get to heaven and you be like that fellow that 
one to Abraham to let out uh, Elijah, Lazarus, go back to go back. I got brothers. Let Lazarus go back and the rich man and Lazarus. Let Lazarus go back and tell my brothers so they don't end up here in town. You know what he told them? He told them, he said, if they didn't listen to the words of the prophets of Moses and the rest of them, they sure ain't going to listen to a dead man coming up out of the ground. But what's going to happen to these people that lead other people astray? What's going to happen if we don't open our mouths and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ? And what it takes to find eternal life. There's a lot going to happen. But it says, Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem become heaps, and the mountains of the houses and the high places of the forest. And what happened? Micah told him this, and it happened, people. It happened. He prophesied that all this was going to happen, and it happened. Because the world had turned away from God. But just like us today, we can talk to people. We can witness to people. Did you ever write down the amount of prophets, the number of prophets that were in the Bible? There's a bunch of them. God sent. You know, it started out back the days of Noah. Noah preached to the people, I'm sure, don't say he preached. But Noah preached to the people, said it took him 120 years, and I'm sure he built, while he was building the ark, that he told people about God. But then there was only eight left or so. They went from there. And then they tried to build a tower up to heaven. They wanted to be like God. And it went on. And then there, there was judges, and there was kings. And then there was a prophet God sent to try to straighten the people out. His chosen people. And they wouldn't listen. As I've said many times, Jesus told a parable about that. The man that had the big vineyard sent everybody and they killed him, threw him out, killed him, threw him out, abused him. And finally he sent his son, just like God did. Sent his son. That's the only way, people, that we have a chance for salvation. <laughs> Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross for us. And we got to tell other people about that. And if you go to verse 4, Micah tells them what the last, what the rest of the story is. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains exalted above the hills people shall flow unto it many nations shall come let us go up to the mountain of the lord the house of god of jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for the law shall go forth of zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar they shall beat their swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn more anymore. We go down to verse 5. It says, For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Is that what you're doing? What are you going to do this week? You know, if you're like me, you probably got a list, or your wife's got a list, or your husband's got a list, or somebody's got a list of what you're going to do this week. <clears throat> if it's God's will, you're going to do that this week. I'll tell you that. But think about what you're going to do this week, and somewhere in there, think of just one person. At least, a hundred's better, but one person. That somehow... You can tell about Jesus Christ this week. Somebody that don't you think don't know Jesus or hasn't turned their life toward Jesus, somehow, whether it's a note, you got to stick up on a wall somewhere that says, Jesus loves you. Or don't forget to pray. Or something like that. 
But sometime this week, see if you can affect one person's life. One person. Because you know what? Years ago, somebody did that to Roger. Somebody affected one person's life. That was me. And you all wouldn't be sitting here if you couldn't say the same thing. Some person affected your life years ago. Maybe last week. I don't know. By telling you about God. Right? But what kind of witnesses are we? And how are people going to know about Jesus if we don't tell them? And don't forget when you do tell them. Don't be like the people of the world today, most of them. Don't tell them what they want to hear. Don't tell them what's going to make them happy. Don't go up and thump your Bible in their face and say, you're going to hell if you don't change your ways. Yeah, that's true. But most of them will go away. They won't listen to you. Be nice. Tell them you've been there too. This one guy had put on his tombstone something that made everybody think. He had his name on there, but he has the road on the tombstone what was written on there. He walked up and looked at it and said, As you are, I once was. As I am, you will be. That's all it was written on there. Think about that. He was once alive, but now he's dead. As you are, I once was. As I am, you will be. One of these days, we're going to have to meet God. What kind of witness does he think you are? Should you tell the truth or should you tell what makes people happy? Well, we don't have a closing song today, but I want to offer anybody that wants to come up.